on Monday with the strongest guest. Welcome to another video. I wanted to talk about two-way radio. Uh, recently, I've upgraded. Warming temperatures along with dry weather is expected tomorrow and the next week. And I found the upgrade to be a valuable asset for several reasons. For a long time, I used these little, like, this one's a Cabela's radio. It's really good because you can recharge it via USB. It does have the microphone input, so you can use a headset. They're really good. They got squelch codes so if you really want some privacy. Uh, this one doesn't have weather. Uh, some of them are able to tune into the NOAA weather stations. That's really handy when you're out in the woods, especially in the wintertime when weather can be unpredictable way up in the mountains. You can get weather that will come in that you won't find back in town. So, I do carry this with me each time I go out. It's a great radio. Um, when I'm out with friends or like yesterday, we had three vehicles. Uh, because we're social distancing, we were in our own vehicles. That one, there was no issue of uh, being too close together. Having the radios was almost invaluable. Hey, huge bump coming up. Uh, well, there's a fun mud puddle. It's not too deep. Hit it fast. Um, hold on, I'm going to go check this hill climb out before you go up there. And uh, Actually, yesterday when we were out, uh, there was one hill climb. The Toyota made it no problem. But uh, once he got to the top, there was a huge tree in the way. Again, these are good radios. Uh, I don't know how much this one costs because it was actually left behind on a trip and no one claimed it. So I decided to keep it. And if you're watching and it's your radio, let me know. But then I went ahead and upgraded. These are technically a ham radio but the signal strength can be adjusted from two five to eight watts i'm not a ham licensed operator so i can't operate at eight watts i think i'm allowed to operate on five but i generally stick at two um, but it allows me the option that when i do pass the test because i am studying uh, to go all the way up to eight watts and be able to hit repeaters if i want to the other nice thing is that i can also use this as a scanner i can use this to keep track of uh, i have I have these little cheat sheets I've printed out, double-sided because there's a lot of frequencies. I've got all, all the NOAA frequencies for the weather. I've got them labeled as Point Arena, Lake of Mendocino, Sacramento. On this one here, I have all the GMRS and FRS frequencies, which are for public use. So I know that I can use those without getting into trouble. More police departments. I've got CAL FIRE, uh, uh, different sheriff's departments. Uh, the Mendocino National Forest uh, frequencies they use from the forest, admin, fire, and service. Um, CAL FIRE, I've got their different districts as labeled. I've got their frequencies. I've even gone to the extent of getting the air to ground frequencies. We woke up one morning and discovered a huge amount of smoke that really scared us because we were out in the middle of nowhere and didn't have cell coverage. November 8th, the M1. Uh, about three miles, maybe four miles north of Paul Mountain. There's a fire apparently burning in Chico. It's really kind of hard to see on here, but it's not fog. You should see ridge, uh, ridge lines for a long time. Forgive me as I stutter. It's real freezing cold. And it's dark enough out that you can actually see the headlights kind of crazy because it's only about two in the afternoon it's really creepy turned out it was the campfire but the smoke was so thick we didn't know if the fire was a hundred yards two miles 20 miles 50 miles so we did hightail it down to where we get coverage and we called uh i'm not sure who we called i think we called the forest service and said hey we're here where is the smoke coming from are we in danger and they said no you're okay it's a long way off so we decided to stay, but it was it was a scary moment. So having radios can be extremely important. With these radios, in theory, I can monitor. I can't broadcast on the, say, the police departments or CAL FIRE frequencies, but I'm allowed to listen in on them. With these radios, I can tune into all those frequencies as my paper blows away. The Mendocino National Forest up here every morning, uh, I don't... The times seem to be different. One morning it was at 10, another it was at noon, but they do broadcast the west side and the east side what the weather forecast for the day is, the fire danger, the humidity, all that kind of stuff. Locally breezy north winds will be possible Tuesday and Wednesday with low daytime humidity. 
Warm and dry conditions continue into the end of the week, but with less wind. With this longer antenna, I can pick up frequencies that I otherwise wouldn't be able to pick up with with the shorter antenna. Uh, with the shorter antenna, I was having trouble listening in on the NOAA weather station, so I simply threaded on a more sensitive antenna that can pick up more signal. They're great for, hey, we're going on a day trip. Here, here's your radio, here's your radio, and here's my radio. Um, and it's perfect because, again, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, being able to communicate with each other is important. Uh, also, though, in an emergency, you can tune into frequencies and you can really send out your signal. Hey, I'm in trouble. Here's where I'm at. Please send help. That's a lifesaver. To me, you can't put a price on that kind of thing. When you're considering radios, look at the price of like this Cabela's one versus something else you can find. If you do buy a Cabela's style, try to find one that does weather. Having a way to, to check the weather every day is you know, invaluable. If it's going to rain later that night, it's kind of nice, nice to know so you can put your stuff away before you go to bed. A lot of times some of the stuff, I'll just tuck it way under the cab because the cab is not going to leak. It's going to protect the, my ammo cans. Uh, anything like my stove, I'll just slide it right underneath the truck. When I do that though, I'll put a post-it on the instrument cluster so I don't forget it's under there and ha hypothetically drive away and run over my stuff. I don't think I'm ever going to buy one of these again. I'm going to buy a better set of these style radios because I can pick up so much more stuff and monitor more things. Uh, I'm the type that gets kind of curious when I'm out and about. I had it tuned the other day to monitoring the uh, Mendocino National Forest. I think it was admin, but it was fun to listen in on them. They found an abandoned car and they ran the license plate and found out it had expired tags and it had been there for quite a while. Someone drove a Mustang into where I, I had to actually check my pathway to get in there with my Subaru. I don't know how they got the Mustang in there, but it was there for a really long time and they finally discovered it. So. I'm just that kind of person that likes to listen when I'm out and about. I'd rather do that than tune into Netflix, which really doesn't work out here anywhere because I don't know everything by any stretch. I've only just begun to study for my ham exam. I would really appreciate it if you know more about radios than I have mentioned in here. Please comment below what radio do you use, what kind of antenna, any bit of information to help inform other people, which is what the premise of this video is. Please comment below. Uh, if you found this video at all interesting or helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. I cover a wide variety of camping videos from radios to trucks, uh, bathrooms to actual campgrounds uh, that are campgrounds to dispersed locations. And in those, I do my best to actually mark the GPS locations so you can go stay there yourself. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up and or a short little comment. Those help get my videos found more often. And I do my best to make videos that are uh, interesting and to share information that others aren't sharing. So, thanks for watching. For the Western Men, but I think I was amongst the staff that was going to start the sun. Like just the shower, and about the temperature value as well as the most important thing for the Western Men. Windows up as well as the most important thing for the Western Men. Maximum humidity value as well as the most important thing for the Western Men. Ridges up as well as the most important thing for the Western Men. Plank of wind, but Towers, lower slopes, both winds 5 to 6 miles down, east and east and light, winds 2 to 4 miles far. Ridges up the slopes, west winds 5 to 7 miles far, LNL to 1, south west to 0.